the dying embers of human existence. As the asteroid, a behemoth the size of Texas, hurdles relentlessly toward Earth, the world braces for an apocalyptic end. Deep beneath the bunker, a refuge plunges into the bowels of the Earth. Here the Chosen gather, their purpose clear, to preserve the very soul of our civilization. The 35 and 70 millimeter prints that encapsulate the magic, the emotion, and the dreams of generations past. These masterpieces, each frame a testament to the human spirit, are carefully catalogued and cradled in the cavernous confines of the bunker. Perhaps there was room for more. For friends and family yearning for salvation, but sacrifices must be made. The movie nerds stand united, the keepers of a flame, promising a future where the art of storytelling endures, transcending the boundaries of time and space. God help us all. Welcome to Back to the Frame Rate, part of the Western Media Podcast Network. Join us as we watch and discuss films on VOD and streaming platforms, deliberating on whether each is worthy of salvation or destined for destruction in the face of the impending asteroid apocalypse. I'm Nathan Shore, and accompanying me are the extraordinary movie mavens Brianna Butterworth, Ellie Escobar, and Sam Cole. And there we have it. And I was about to say, and joining... <laughs> I know the thing is, the funny thing is, I rewrote my opening and I have all these grammatical errors because I I wrote it to also say that joining us as a full-time host for her final episode is Ellie Escobar. So, but welcome everyone. And I'm going to pass over to Ellie in a moment, but I have kind of made a tradition. I'm trying to make it a tradition to begin every episode (laughs) with a question. I have been racking my brain. What's he going to (laughs) ask? Um, and I want our host to settle the age-old debate that has plagued the greatest minds for centuries. Fuck me. <sighs> Is the super sternal notch on a woman a myth? Go. I what? thought it was. I thought it was real, but I didn't bother to Google it. I, I, I thought it was real. Like, um, is it a myth on a woman, but real on a man? <laughs> is this well, like an Adam's rib situation? No, I thought. I thought that he said super. I thought that's an actual thing on your neck that, like, that that is like, a real yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah, it's a hole. Definitely the answer I wanted, Ellie. Thank you, <laughs> Nathan. Nathan, all I have to say to that comment is, for God's sakes, man. <laughs> I, I, just, I, just, I just brought the podcast down to a whole hey, super external notches on the movie, movie, movie reference bur, bur. <laughs> <laughs> well you guys have the Adam's apple and we needed a hole so what the hell <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> True. I'm just saying <laughs> I was just saying. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't have an Adam's apple. I just have a burly pool of fat where my head moves around like <laughs> in a soup of. And then when you kiss, when yeah. a guy kisses the girl, the Adam's apple goes in the girl's holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's how it goes. Y'all know that. Sam, you just described yourself like the Baron and do. Yeah. I, well, I that, I look at him. I'm like, hey, I didn't know I was in this movie. <laughs> yes. Speaking of Dune, you know, I watched Dune and The English Patient on the same day. <laughs> There's a lot of sand, <laughs> man. There's so out much sand. <laughs> so much sand. Did you go home? Were there like sand in your shoes? You were like, I, I felt it. I was like checking like my underwear and all the oh crevices everywhere. I was like, That's did you check your much. super sternal notch? Did you find <laughs> still <sand>? there? <laughs> By the way, because we are a, a worldwide uh, cultural podcast, I would like to point out in, in America, it's called Dune, and the French call it Dune. Yeah, but actually on this podcast, it's pronounced Dune? So, <laughs> in, in Espanol, you say Dune. Oh, Dune. okay. Dune. Dune. <laughs> did you like Dune, Sam, Nathan? Did you like it? Yeah, I did. I did like Dune a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a good movie. Yeah. Big fan. So we're not 
reviewing Dune today. We are watching. <laughs> we, we are. Not yet. We, are, we did uh, watch, happened? and we're going to be discussing the English Patient from 1996. And I will. I have a plot you, you have a hot sand in your butt home when you go to the <laughs> that's, beach. That's not, that sounds awful. <laughs> 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 like, do you, do you, do you, do you, do is that the sound guys, of it? Hey guys, remember when I showed you the book by that author and his name was Harry Hole? I just wanted to. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> we are we 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 have reached a whole nother sensor level on Apple Podcasts. A whole nother. That's okay. I have a plot kids synopsis. Love this episode. Yeah, they will. Yes. Bring your kids everyone. Yeah. Um, my plot synopsis. For Dune. For, for Dune, yes. <laughs> the sweeping expanses of the Sahara are the setting for this passionate love affair in this adaptation of Michael, I can't say his name, on, on Dateji, the, who's the guy that wrote this novel? Yeah, that guy. Oh. A, a, a badly burned man, Lazo de Amalje. How do you, he, it's referred to in the movie oh, a few times. Amalje, thank you, Sam. Yeah. Played by Ray, Ray Fines is tended to by a nurse, Hannah, played by Juliet Binoche, in an Italian monastery near the end of World War II. His past is revealed through flashbacks involving a married Englishwoman, played by Kristen Scott Thomas, and his work mapping the African landscape. Hannah learns to heal her own scars as she helps the dying man. However, because I love to do this, mm -hmm. I have the version for your children <laughs> as well. Brought to you by ChatGTP. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a guy named Laszlo who got really, really sunburned in the desert. Like a crispy oh, potato chip. <laughs> then along came Nurse Hannah, who was like a superhero with bandages. While she patched him up, Laszlo remembered all sorts of wild adventures, like trying to impress a lady named Catherine. It's a bit like a big desert soap opera, but with fewer tears and more sunscreen. <laughs> Oh boy! I mean, his face didn't look like a Raffles potato chip. Yeah, yeah. I, I would Actually, not. It, eat it was very gooey uh, at first, yeah. you know. But in the, you know, in the his, his face was done by the Jim Henson creature shop. I could not help but make a comparison to dying Skeksis in the Dark Crystal. But anyway. Ooh. honestly, I thought the makeup was great. But in the flashbacks, it's more like Ralph Fine. Am I right? I mean. <laughs> 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 Yeah, this movie is, you know, I, he he did have that very, very significant role in Shindo's List, but this is really the movie that put him on the map. So he does have one line in this movie where I thought he delivered it and sounded exactly like Voldemort from Harry Potter. Oh, really? I, can't remember. I thought about and Voldemort was, so much second, in this I movie. Like, I thought about, well, I was like, wow, he's been practicing to not have a nose for so long. <laughs> <laughs> Training for this. Is it all right if I just play the the quick trailer for this? Sure. I have it queued up here. I think this is it. I hope it's it. <laughs> Name, rank, serial number. Sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> I think I was a pilot. Are you German? No. How do you know you're not German if you don't remember anything? They found him near a plane crash in the Sahara. Why are you set the time to keep me alive? Because I'm a nurse. A man with no name, no country, and no past. You're in love with him, aren't you? Ask your saint who he is. Ask him who he's killed. But beyond the mystery that holds him captive lies the memory of a love that can set him free. Promise me you'll come back for me. I promise. I'll come back for you. I promise. I'll never leave you. Return to me. Where does that sound familiar? I don't know. Atonement. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get to some movie facts. Sam, do you have some queued up for us? Indeed, I have some movie facts. So this film was directed by none other than Anthony Magella. And he also wrote the screenplay 
For what she actually won an Academy Award, I believe, for Best Adapted Screenplay, he also did that one award for The Talented Mr. Ripley, which he also wrote mm-hmm. the for. I did not know that. Also um, known as The Better Saltburn. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> um, it's based on the English Patient by Michael, produced by Saul Zantz. And uh, before I get in some, into some technical de- details, just wanted to mention the cast. Ray Fiennes, Juliette Binoche, the great Willem Dafoe, Kristen Scott Thomas, Naveen Andrews, Colin Firth, Julian Wadham, and Jurgen Prochnow. And a huge shout out to the cinematography by John Seal. I think this is like one of the best looking desert movies in terms of technical, you know, cinematography. He's done a lot of other cinematography work, including, which so surprised good. me, The Perfect Storm with, with George Clooney, Mark Wahlberg, which also mm. looked you know, really good. It has that, those New England colors and the ocean and stuff. Huge shout out to Walter Murch, the the editor. And I'm going to mention the Academy Awards in a minute. The music is by Gabriel Yared. And I, for me, the music is maybe like 50% of why I personally like this movie. Distributed by Miramax. This came out November 15th, 1996. Quick note, I wanted to see it then, but I was with my parents and they all went to see that. But because I had like a, a 12 year old friend with me, they made you me had to see Space Jam. I had to go see 101 <laughs> Dalmatians. Oh, with, uh, Glenn Close. Right. oh. But I did, it was fine. It was good. It was good. But I did catch it later at do, Nathan. I don't know if you if you know this, but what it's not the Avon, but there was there was a theater in Providence, Rhode Island that was like had couches where mm. you sit on couches. The cable car. The cable car. That's where I saw this. I movie. remember the cable yeah. car. Yeah. The print. Yeah. I was 15 when this came out. The print of that, of the, wow. at the cable car. That was the, boy, did that movie look so That's crazy. history. This movie is actually, ironically, about within two or three minutes, it's the same exact runtime as uh, Out of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, where the movie's like two hours and 36 minutes and there's like 10 minutes of credits. Um, it, uh, yeah, I had no problem staying awake for this one. Versus yeah, yeah, that. totally. I, I, <laughs> know, I hear you. Um, the uh, big box office success, the budget was $31 million, not including marketing, and it made $232 million. So big success. And just regarding where it was shot, this movie was shot on location in Tunisia and Italy. And on location, man, it makes a difference. Oh God, it makes mm. a difference. Yeah, I, I just, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it later. What I love about this movie is it feels like it's this huge epic budget, but man, were they economical shooting that. In fact, Steven Spielberg mm. was so inspired watching this movie that he cut the budget of Amistad when they said it was oh. going to cost this much. I think he said, no, 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 I've seen it done cheaper for English patient. We can do it cheaper. Wow. Uh, I was going to yeah. ask if 30 million was a lot in 1996. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's not, it was no cheap movie, but it, it, that's not like big, big, big. Budget. I would look at this and assume this cost more than that. Yeah. Okay. But to yeah. give you a sense, like <laughs> Jurassic Park 1993 was like 60 million. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So 64 million, give or take. Lastly, I'll, I'll just mention Oscar now. It was not nominated for 12 Oscars at one nine, including oh. Best Director for Anthony Magella, Best Picture, Best Supporting Actress, Juliet Binoche won. Best Editing, actually, it was the first Oscar, it was the first editing nomination for a digitally edited film. This film was mm. edited on digital, a uh, nonlinear editing program, I'm assuming. Um, and so that was kind of, that was really cool because now like everything is edited that way. Ray Fiennes and Kristen, Kristen Scott Thomas were both nominated for best actor and actress. They didn't win. And lastly, the AFI ranked it the 56th mm. <laughs> greatest love story of all time. So I don't know what the <laughs> other ones are, but so yeah, it did, it, it did well. It was, it was well received in its, in its time. And I was like 15. So I remember it pretty clearly. And I, I saw it in the theater actually twice back then at the cable car. Thank you for reminding me of the name of that theater. I totally yeah. forgot that place. Yeah. And it did very well with the, the BAFTAs as well. Best film, mm-hmm. supporting actress, adaptive screenplay, cinematography, editing, and original music. It And Golden Globes, best picture yeah. for drama. It, I mean, it, this thing swept everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Thank you, Sam. There's a, I just wanted to hop on, I think, one or two other things here. You you mentioned a couple of the, the crew members on this. John Seal, I just want to say, cinematographer, oh incredible. And his track record. I mean, he did one of my all-time favorite movies, Witness. Uh, I should say, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. That's that. I love that movie. Yeah, wow. Witness, and I think one of all of our favorite movies, especially Ellie, Dead Poet Society. He shot. I that love well. that movie. And Wait. in in contemporary, wow. he did the first Harry Potter movie and Mad Max Fury Road. So oh. this guy has done oh, wow. everything. God. He's got wow. some great he stuff. Also, he He's also did Three Thousand Years of Longing, which this movie yes. really reminds me of. Mm. Like they feel very of a of a set. But since, Mad Max Fury, but since Mad Max Fury Road, I think that movie, just the, the 3,000 Years of Longing, is that what it is? Or is the yeah. only film he's done since Fury Road. So mm-hmm. he's kind of slowed down a lot. I don't know if there's what else he's, if he's retired or he's just really t- slowed down on the workload. That's, that's amazing. He's earned I it. Of, I yeah. glanced over his, I did not realize he did all those movies. And, and regarding the first Harry Potter, that movie looks Ooh. great. It yeah. just like yeah. the movie, like the visuals in that, like I just the the lighting and the like, man, damn. Yeah. To your point, so Sam, good. that movie still looks great. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it yeah. always ends up on a rewatch. That movie still looks great. <laughs> it does, man. Uh, it, it, I just, yeah. oh, wow. Thanks for sharing that. I did. I did yeah. not know. I got to research him. Like this, this, this mm-hmm. guy's awesome. <laughs> he is. He is. Yeah. All right. So, and I, and I like to add this little bit of tidbits of information about the release date. I, as you mentioned, this came out on November 15th, 1996. Coming out on this day, as I mentioned this before, Space Jam came out on November 15th of that same day. <laughs> and The Mirror Has Two Faces. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I think Jeff Bridges and I forget who else was in that, but I never saw it. Yeah. Released the week before was Ransom, Mel Gibson. I saw that, and, yep. Yeah, I saw that in the theater, I remember. And released the week after was Jingle All the Way. Oh, my God. Yeah, and- <laughs> I got to get the present and, you know, to my son. <laughs> and um, Star Trek First Contact. Yes. Oh, I saw that in the theater. God, yeah. I love Star yeah. Trek First Contact. Yeah. In fact, it's yeah. like, yeah, the, yeah, Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Good, good time for movies, yeah. <laughs> All right. What's, but what do, what do we think about this film? I, I think I drew the short straw. So I'm, I guess I'm going first. Nathan, what did you think about this film? All, all the pressure <laughs> on me. I didn't want to go first in this because I, I said it before we began. I I geeked out so much on Atonement last week. I think I've got nothing left in me. Well, just, but I'll, listeners, I'll, I'll if you haven't you right heard now. our Atonement episode, go back quick. I'll it tell you right so now. I, I I just went down this deep rabbit hole for Atonement, and I'm like, I don't have I don't have it in me to ever do that again. And if, if you go back and listen to the Atonement episode, you can see me make some jackass comments that I really regret. Yeah. Like, too late, it's on the air. Um, <laughs> So this, you know, this film just should be luxuriated in uh, more than any of the other films. I think we watched part of this epic romance series. I feel like this one encapsulates all of the the sweeping mm-hmm. epic romance that transcends this genre that we've been watching. I, I'm, I may also add that I'm really glad that we're ending on this one too, because I think it touches all the themes that the previous films all did to some extent. You know, mm-hmm. forbidden love. Non-linear storytelling set to the backdrop of a of a war or conflict, and uh, I guess ultimately ending where both one or both protagonists suffer some tragic ending. Mm-hmm. But those cornerstones of the series are settled deeply in in the world of historical and political elements, which I think is cool. the The events of the ongoing war have impact in the characters we don't ever really see world war ii but we sense it we feel it well we get some cool movies. planes yeah hey. <laughs> planes there's you know how many movies have we watched this year that just have a plane or a plane crash in it like, <laughs> it's like, can get a movie without a plane crash in it like it's that should not- be one of our letterbox lists <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, there's so much striking symbolism throughout this movie. There's there's multifaceted characters, especially the female leads, you know, with Kristen Scott Thomas and Juliette Binoche. Uh, you know, there's just interwoven storylines that are masterfully weaved together. You know, these characters creating an interconnective narrative that I, I think some someone I think could find confusing. But you know, I, I you know, I'm gonna balance all this out. 
somehow. I'm, 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 <laughs> no, I'm just being really scattered with these thoughts. But this movie is so big. I'm trying to contextualize mm-hmm. all of this, and it's really hard for me because I don't know how I feel about all of this. I, I feel like I watched this great epic movie, but I still am not 100% if I know what it all amounts to. The the romance between – I'm going to mess up his name. I never really got it down. Al, Almashi? Uh, Almashi? I think it's Almashi. And Almashi, I, I Almashi. British guys like Almashi. Okay, so Almashi and Catherine, I found to be the least interesting part of this film. And it might be because I couldn't get over Ray Fine's portrayal of him. He's mm-hmm. kind of a first class posh asshole. <laughs> I think Someone. he's deeply unlikable in this movie. I found him mm, yeah. really hard to like or even root for. The yeah. guy on his team I could get behind was Maddox. <laughs> he was fun, charming, okay. educated, and not a brooding ball of detached emotions. Again, we have an out of Africa symptom here. I know. Yeah. 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 It, I was just going to – yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> because of this, I had a difficult time finding my way into the central romance. And the present-day mm-hmm. version of Amashi, I again struggled mightily with his motivations. I don't – think the film does a great job explaining his motivations after the accident when he's being cared for by Hannah. The way it uses flashbacks to show his past. The, the romance I did fall head over heels for is between Hannah and Kip. You know, Kip's played by Naveen Andrews. I think he's really good in this. He needs so to be in more films. I loved him in Lost, and that's where I remember him from. Mm. I'm going to leave it at that for right now. I'm sounding like a broken record. I'm not making a lot of sense here. What, what's your rating, Nathan? I'm going to give it a three. I think that I, I love the grand epic scale of this. It's it's my second favorite movie in this retrospective still. But mm-hmm. I can't wait to talk about w- the motivations of Almashi. I want to ask you guys about – you know, the whole amnesia part of it. Cause I, I have theories about, I mean, not really much of a theory, but I want to think that there's more to it than there, there might be. I want to believe that he could be an unreliable narrator, but I feel like maybe I'm, I want something to be more than there is in this movie, but the movie's not giving it to me. Hmm. I'm going to pass it to, to be. Sure. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I don't, I don't think this movie is trying to keep anything from you. Like in, in the way that atonement, I think wants you to figure things out in terms of Ray Fiennes being an unreliable narrator. I I don't think that's it. I think they would have alluded to that more heavily, heavy handedly so that I, I was kind of on board with whatever they told me was what was happening. I really like this movie. So my history with this movie is that I, I remember hearing about it when it came out and I, <laughs> even just the title, I was like, that's a grown up movie. I don't think I'm going to be seeing that movie. That's a grown up ass movie. And then it wasn't until years later, I think it was playing on TV or something. And I, it was kind of like one of those in the background movies. So this is my first real, like earnest watch of this film. And I had some memories. I was like, Oh, right. I remember the makeup. Oh, right. I remember the planes, but this is my first time really sitting down and watching it fully formed with intention, start to finish. And I I had a real deep appreciation for it. I think in general, there's a few narrative and thematic structures in place in this movie that will like automatically engender it to me always. I am a sucker if a movie is told through flashback. I love that. Brief Encounter, Atonement does it a little. Big Fish, Eternal Sunshine. I mean, I love these movies. So automatically, this is just going to hit some of those right notes for me. I just was sold by the storytelling function, but pulsating through it. Uh, and Nathan, I know we talked a little bit about this before the episode. We have Herodotus in this like very pretentiously academic Greek histories, which born and bred New Englander pretentious academia is another thing I'm a sucker for. So yes, please spoon feed me more of that. But I think more than the subject matter of histories, because I did try and get into it a little bit. Spoiler alert, super boring. But the function of it, which was like, oh, here's two people of a similar ilk with similar passions who are able to find each other through this. You know, when we have 
Catherine's character in the desert telling her story. And we have Ralph Fiennes as the academic being drawn to it. But more than that, I think woven through becomes um, a movie about storytelling and a movie about the intimacy of telling stories. And I think we see that a lot when they start to tell each other the story of their own romance in the flashback setting. And you can see that even when she's like pasting her paintings in the book and how that's a real pivotal moment, they're writing their own narrative together. And I thought that was really beautiful. And up until the end, up until present day with Juliette Binoche, he's weaving a story. And I thought through that lens, I came to really appreciate the film. I, I, also found Fine's character pretty unlikable. I thought he was a little unintentionally chauvinistic. I thought <laughs> I think he thinks he was being really gentlemanly and really kind, but I I think to a modern woman, even Colin Firth was like, she can make up her own mind, she can decide all these things, and it made him sort of automatically look a little dated. But I thought he came across as as a little coarse, which I think I forgave a little bit more in the present day scenes, because who wouldn't be? in that situation, right? He's like bedridden. But yeah, I'm, I'm rambling here. The dual nature of storytelling, I think, was the real standout. I was impressed that both parts of the movie had such three-dimensional characters. I feel like sometimes the present day serves as a narrative structure, but it can get left behind. But I would die for Juliette Bidosh. I would die for her relationship with <laughs> the scene. I, I love them. I thought they were so sweet. I loved Willem Dafoe in this. I thought he brought a great depth and urgency to why we're telling the story now, why we see Ralph Fiennes now. I thought that made a lot of sense. I don't know that both halves were equal to some of their parts. I felt like because of the switching back and forth, it prevented me from getting like swept away in the way I did with Atonement emotionally. But I think I was definitely on board. I liked it. Sorry, the end. That was so long. (laughs) That's that's great. Awesome. Wait, wait, how many, how many stars? Yeah, what do you give it? So I, I gave Atonement four, and I, I give this four to different reasons, but like they're both four star movies. Okay. All right. Awesome. Ellie. Okay, so here's my review of this film. I watched this film back in the day. Carlos was probably just like a newborn. And at that time, my marriage wasn't in a good place, right? So when I watched this film, I totally connected to the part of, was it, is it Kristen? Katie? What's her name? Kristen. Catherine. 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 Because I feel that Catherine is not happy in her marriage. Because why else would a woman have a secret affair with someone else unless you're not happy with the, with the husband you are having at hand? Mm -hmm. So one, he was always gone. He was never there for her. So she was left alone a long time. You know, so I, as a woman in a marriage where there was, you know, the husband's always missing, going out there, doing his thing, I totally connected with this character because of that, mm-hmm. because she was longing to have that companion come al- along. What's his name? Ash. Amashi. 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 And Not fine. Yeah. yeah. And as, yeah. as egotistical mm-hmm. and as... You know, what's the word? You said it be chauvinistic. It's chauvinistic that he made of appear as a character. It didn't matter. I totally it didn't matter her love because her she, love was so palpable. And I don't think she was planning on falling in love um, with this guy. Mm-hmm. You know, it started out as a you know, like you know, I, an acquaintance, a friendship, like anything else. And so, and it turns into something much more. But the thing is, here's a woman that's left beh- alone. Lots of time, the husband's doing his thing, comes this guy and practically sweeps her away. And that happens a lot, you know. And and so was it wrong that she cheated on her husband? I think her husband was a chauvinistic pig too. I think I think he was like, not only that, but he does what most men that are jealous is we don't see in the movie the confrontation of him and her because up up until the time that they were watching the movie, I don't think he even knew. Uh, she even knew that he already knew mm-hmm. that she was cheating on him. Because I don't, I don't think so either. No, yeah. she yeah. never knew. So all we see is this guy practically trying to murder his wife, and 
We see that right. every single time. We see domestic violence every single day, mm-hmm. right? So men try to end the life of that woman because they don't right. want to try to the murder it. suicide at the end. Yeah, yeah. murder suicide. Like you know, yes. so so I think for that, I I have no pity for Jeffrey Clifton at all. Because or- one, you put your wife in that situation. I'm sorry. You put your wife in a situation. Come Alone another man. in the desert with someone who looks as good as Ralph Fiennes. I'm telling you, then- like, right? And then he was, uh, as much as the character might seem chauvinistic, to her, he wasn't. To her, he was the answer to her loneliness. Mm-hmm. And she went with it. And she was in that moment living the best romance of her life because her husband couldn't mm-hmm. give it to her. And and that's exactly what I saw in this movie. And and it's sad. It's really sad that the husband, you know, the natural thing to do is talk to each other and say, hey, if you don't, if you're in this loveless relationship, then let's let's end it. Right. Mm-hmm. But Joffrey didn't do that. He took it upon his hand to end everything for her. That's how jealous and vicious he is. And that's how I saw this man. Like, basically, you're that's vicious. That's a great read. Yeah. You're yeah. going to just, you know, end the relationship. So there's so many parts about this movie that I really loved. I'm a journal type but of But at person. the same time, I don't think he was trying to kill his wife. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, he was. Because if when he's pointing the, the plane down, he basically crashed the plane. Yeah. Do you think he tried to kill? Yeah. I think that was an accident. I think yeah. he... I think he wanted to kill, kill him. He wanted to kill three, Amalgie. I think he, I wanted, think he to wanted to kill all three of them. All three of them. Oh, I think he wanted okay. to just take, he said, if I can't have my wife, I'm no, taking no, three none of us. Interesting. Down. Oh, I never and, really thought about it. Okay. And, and, yeah. but I, I can see how that's open interpretation and mm-hmm. keep going. Ellie. I just wanted to say something really quick, Ellie. Yeah. I agree with you so much about, I thought Colin Firth's acting job as the guy, the jealous guy was excellent. And I actually know some Ooh. people who I think dislike the movie because for whatever reason they relate mm. to Colin Firth's character, or maybe they're the dude who mm. has had a wife that has, mm. and so they're like, mm-hmm. so they can't get past that. And they're like, mm. oh, this movie is about, you know, betrayal, but it's because deep down they feel the insecurity within themselves because they yeah. know they're Colin Firth and they're mm-hmm. not Ray Fiennes and it, it, it hurts them. Yeah. And it's true. And at first glance, yeah. you will kind of side with Colin, you know, with Joffrey, the character, right? You will side with him and you feel bad for him. Like, especially when he comes to celebrate their anniversary and he sees her leaving with, with yeah. Fanes. And the thing is, what what you have to understand is that Colin, when, when it was Christmas and she went inside and had her, you know, her little... Uh, you know, whatever, sexy, sexy scene with, with, with fans. <laughs> sexy. I was like, oh, yummy, yummy, yum. Thing, with bagpipes, right? with bagpipes, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yummy, like, yummy, 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 yummy scene. And he was like, he was like, he comes in and he goes, oh, I heard that you were feeling bad. And, and then he's like, what is that smell I feel? Dude, that's the sex smell you're obviously smelling, <laughs> the sex smell, right? So he's like smelling. And in that moment, he made, he, he decided, and I can see it in that moment. Colin decided that he was gonna mm. come back unannounced, something that he's never done, okay, because he's never even been there for his wife. He wanted to come unannounced to catch her, to catch her in he the was, act. He was already subconsciously specific, suspicious. He couldn't admit him to himself, yeah. but he was going, I- I'm doing this for the fun. And then when he's driving up and he sees her getting in the car. He, he deep down he was hoping it wasn't going to happen. And it he wasn't, gonna... and he's like, "Oh my god!" And he can't handle it, and it's just yeah. like, "Ooh." ooh. In my opinion, this character is a coward. He he's a coward because he never faced his wife with the truth. Mm-hmm. He never did. Instead, he did everything sneakily. She, yeah, she was cheating on him, but she wasn't hiding it. You know, she went out there, and you know, she knew that it was wrong. But at the same time, this guy went around it. He was sneaky about it. He, she smelled it. He smelled her, her smell. Then he goes into like, oh, I'm going to go surprise my wife since when? And then 
he crashes the plane to try to kill all of them. Mm. So hello, no, you're a coward because you could never face your wife to ask, do you love me still? Are you in love with someone else? That's how you fix shit. You don't go and kill people. Okay. And this happens every day. And I'm thinking like, you know, why wouldn't you just be able to say something to her? And so, and, and, and I do love the journaling part because I'm a journal person. I write journals and I've been writing journals forever. And journals can tell you a story about people's life and what's been, yeah, mm-hmm. and what's been going on in their lives, right? Especially if you've, you know, if you're in a bad situation with a marriage or something and you start to write and then you look back and you can literally write a story about what happened. But, you know, and then there's... Um, love story as well. And I really love Juliet. I, Juliet is one of my mm-hmm. favorite actresses and I love her in everything that she does. And she portrays, I, I love, you know, the part where, you know, when he asks, when Fane says, why are you here with me? But how, why you stay behind? And she gives a very simple answer because I'm a nurse, you know? And I love that because mm-hmm. it's so sincere. It's so sincere because she's a nurse. But again, she has nothing really anymore because her significant other probably has been killed. Remember, it gets yeah. she gets no news that he was killed. Her friend was killed with a bomb, right? So mm-hmm. she's lost two people that she really love and care for. And but now, she still brings so much brightness to this role. She does. And she Looks just lady. like... And, and, but there's a childlike person in that yeah. character that I love about her. You know, when she's, she looks at that, abandon whatever castle and she's like a little child like oh but the things that i could do with this with this castle or church whatever it is mm-hmm. and then she puts it together and you know it's so she's so selfless mm-hmm. in this film when she gets the eggs from william defoe and she quickly cooks them and gives them to the patient you know i mean that's selfless and then william okay I never oh, thought. Oh, wait, wait, I want to say one thing. I just love the line where, where I think she comes and says, "There's a man downstairs. He may stay. He brought us eggs." And Ray Fine says, "Why does he ha- does he lay eggs?" <laughs> <laughs> There's some good humor in this movie. There right? is some there good is. humor. Or like yes. like when he's she's putting the books as a, a stairs, yeah. and he goes, "What is all that noise? Are you killing rats or are the Germans yes. something like that?" I forget what he said. <laughs> But but I love her story because I, I love the flashbacks and I love, you know, just the the whole thing about her is also a romance, you know, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Juliet is also a romance. And then comes William. And let me tell you something. I've always thought of William. I'm sorry, William, but I I never thought of you as handsome. But in this film, I thought he was kind of hot. With I no like, thumbs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like William Defoe is like coming right off the set of like Wild at Heart or something like that. Because he's. I was thinking that, of Wild at Heart. I, I'm, he's bringing that same energy. At yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. I've never seen, you know, I've forgotten that William is in this film is really good looking. Look, so this, this, look this is definitely, this is definitely pre, this is pre, can Spider-Man come out? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, you so I, I really, everybody looks good in this movie. Everybody like, does. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm uh, so glad we caught this on film, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I really, I love the love story between twins and Kristen because mm-hmm. uh, it's relatable and any mm-hmm. woman, mm-hmm who watches this film, who's been in a bad marriage, will totally connect to Kristen and that love story, okay? And also connect to the fact that the husband just killed, tried to kill her. But uh, I, basically, yeah, he ended up killing her because she ends up dying, right? Because, yeah. but, but there's a sadness to this film because of the tragic that the love story could be. The agony of faints when he's trying to save her and he gets jailed and Mm. oh i felt his agony because he knew that if he didn't go back he knew he she was gonna die but i also think that he was not having amnesia i really think that he knew he was very much conscious and he knew exactly what was going on and he knew who he was i don't think he was ever not knowing who he was. And I know he knew who William was too <laughs> when mm-hmm. he showed up. That's uh, the thing that I want to kind of get into as well. I feel like it's trying to play his cards close to the vest about 
you know, well, not really. I, I, I guess we're we're supposed to believe that that he has amnesia, and, and I'm not really buying it. No. But I feel like that's supposed to be like an obvious thing that we're supposed to just accept. Mm. But I, I want to believe that it, it is kind of possibly ambiguous, or there is a that it, there are hints laid out throughout this movie where we call that into question. But I didn't really see. It explicitly the, those those clues in the movie the way I would expect. I mean, I just I just mm-hmm. maybe I put it in my own head that that it's there. But like I if, if, the movie, if but, but if he had but, amnesia, Nathan, if okay, if he had amnesia, mm-hmm. because the the way the camera was doing things was like he'll he'll go back to his face, you know, and he, through his eyes you could see he was going back to his life story with Kristen. So in my mind, I'm thinking he knows where he is. Cause if you have amnesia, you don't remember anything. Mm. So I, I don't want to get too deep into this. Cause I want to get to Sam's opinion. Yeah. I want to get rating on this, but I want to get to this some more because there's so much that's going on between the flashbacks in the present day in 1943, because I, I, I find it kind of weird how my opinion is, is that it's not very clear if the flashbacks are something that is having an impact on Almashi remembering these things and like, is it changing him? Cause we'll get to this some more I, 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 before we well, do that, Ellie. But okay. I, I want to get to Sam too, before he hasn't really given his full opinion. Okay. On this. Yeah. B did you want to say something? I was just going to say, Ellie, you mentioned like how just the tragedy that happened around Laszlo. I kind of think of present day as like a redemption arc for him because everything centered around Almashi, around Ralph Fiennes' character is like he brings all this tragedy. You know, like if you get sucked into his orbit, even with Willem Dafoe and then Juliette Binoche, you know, she like abandons the service and goes and serves him. And so like allowing Willem Dafoe at the end to sort of like overcome his feelings and Juliet to feel a romance, I think is this like demonstration of life going on after the effects of him. But it was, yeah, it was just interesting sort of how the negative impacts he had on the world around him constantly. And I don't, I don't think that's all the war, you know? No, I think he's, he's, this is the character. I don't think it was yeah. the war because the war wasn't there when they first started, you know. So yeah, Ellie, yeah. give me yeah. give, give, what is your rating for this? I want to get the Sam, please. I, I I'll give it five stars. Five. Yeah, I really nice. like this film. Five star territory. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Go wrong. All right, <laughs> Sam. I'm sorry, we, you've waited so long. Give oh, us <laughs> not at all. No, I actually, yeah. I love what you guys are saying, and and you said a lot. I could go on and on, but I'll, <laughs> I'll just get to a few specific things. I love Anthony McNilla's direction in this movie. I I think the performances mm-hmm. are excellent, but the camera angles enhance character moments for me personally Mm. in a way that atonement felt more painterly and I felt kind of closed out emotionally. I'm only speaking for myself there. With this film, I felt really emotionally let in on the moment. And rather than go through tons of moments in the film, I'm going to zero in detailed on one specific moment. B, a point you actually brought up, I totally hear you about Almashi's chauvinism. But when he's walking up to Clifton and he says, you know, are you sure you want to leave her with us? A woman can't handle herself in the desert. I don't know if he actually believes that. I think he doesn't trust himself and is so attracted to her that he does not want to be in the position where he's alone with her and he's worried for the situation because mm. their chemistry is so intense mm-hmm. that I, I like that read so okay. much better. I think he's yeah. trying to just speak Clifton's language because he w- obviously he wants her to stay, but he's there. The sparks between them are so intense and going on to the camera angles there, mm. Clifton goes off to the plane and then you just see Ray fine standing there. And if you notice Catherine is in the background, standing still, watching them, and so she's there. there the chemistry is the is already there. They're, they're mm. so tuned in. There's so many of these moments when she's around the campfire and they're all singing in the desert, and she's telling yeah. her story, and it rack focuses to Ray finds, and he just kind of takes a moment to himself, and he he his head goes down, and he goes like, oh shit. 
to me, I read that moment as, oh my God, I'm head over heels in love with her already. How do I handle this? I am in trouble right now. I'm sinking fast. And the whole film to me is peppered with direction that really enhances character moments for me. And so their acting sells it anyway, but the combination of acting and cinematography and the, the direction enhancing these interpersonal relationship hits me so hard in a way that some movies don't and, and some movies do. This one hits me like a ton of bricks Regarding seal cinematography, there is a scene when they're, you know, when their cars have flipped over and they're stuck in the desert at night <laughs> before the sandstorm mm-hmm. is coming. The way that shot is lit, there's a look to it mm-hmm. that is so incredible to me. And I, I clear, obviously there's lights because if you were in the desert, it'd be a lot darker, but it doesn't oh, yeah. matter because it's so emotionally it just, it's romantic. It's so romantic, and it, mm. it hits yeah. the the feels when they go to the cave of swimmers, where they see the like ancient paintings. Mm. That hits me hard. I, for me, this movie hits me on such a um, subconscious, fundamental levels that it kind of gives me the chills, and it also gives me like hope that that my spirit is like still alive <laughs> and yeah. still like a chance for adventure because. I have been like hurting lately. And so when you're not doing Mm. well and you see a movie that reminds you of the possibility of romance and adventure, it hits like a ton of bricks. I I will say too that, and I'm not, I'm not doing that bad. I I just, I'll just, for me, I I won't go into it. I'll say it's like a rough two weeks, but life in general is good. I can't complain. So, but I will say what's fascinating to me about this movie is I saw it in 1996 as a 15 year old in 2004, my friend in college really loved this movie and we would have kind of movie nights where a bunch of friends would get together. We watch, and this was the film we watched at uh, his apartment. And what's interesting, my brain or my perception of reality at the age of 23, there were so many subtle things that I missed. I appreciated the epicness. I liked the scope and the scale, but I didn't, there were things I didn't notice. And so when I saw it now, as a 42 year old, I was sh- almost shocked at all these things that I picked up on that I didn't see before. It, they, it hit me with such alarming clarity in a good way. I feel like a different person now because I, I saw the motivations of the characters. I noticed things I didn't even notice before. It's like there was this evolution where it was like, oh my God. And uh, it's so it just was it was the viewing that I had the other night was like hard hitting in a good way. But it was mm. also like intense. I was like, Ooh. you know, what's funny, Sam, though, yeah. uh, uh, what's funny is that when I first watched this film, I actually cried. and I was very emotional with the film watching it now. I was not crying. I was not emotional. I was actually pissed off. I, it's interesting. I feel your emotion because because I know what's coming and I know the emotional beats. My emotion came from where I was. My emotion was inward. It came from where I am in my life now as opposed mm-hmm. to where I was in my life in 23. I did not, you know, shed a tear at the emotional beats. When I saw it in the theater for the first time, I found it overwhelmingly emotional. I think it's just because I know the beats and I know what's coming. You know, the, the supr- there's still, but but the the grandeur and the music and 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 there's some tense like that scene in in Tobruk with Willem Dafoe getting his thumbs cut off is just Ooh. like oh, Jesus. Yeah. like Ooh. that hits that hits hard. And so there's a lot more things I could say, but I I will simply say very positive reaction and I love the the intercutting. I think this movie is about like memory and time, and mm. I love. At how the, the the sound design where like he'll hear like the pattering of feet, then that will switch to like someone playing drums in the past. Like he's going in and out yeah. of his morphine haze. And I, lo- I happen to love the pastime desert story. And I, I love the, the, the later story, but that desert story, in fact, and this has nothing to do with this movie and I'm about to make a sacrilegious <laughs> comment, but I like the way the desert looks in this film better than in the two Dune movies. And I've got to be a maniac <laughs> for saying that. Yeah. Um, and and I, I might retract that later if like people come at my house with like, you know. <laughs> no, um, it looks beautiful. I, I, think, I think that's fair enough. Um, you know, yeah. can, I mention, can I mention one thing? I, I don't want, I want you to continue, but the, the, the desert stuff for a moment, I, I, I want to 
tie something back into the cinematography since you 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 brought that up for a moment. Some of my all time favorite shots of this movie were all those flying sequences in the looking down overhead at the desert. This movie opens up with this amazing, first of all, that, that shot of the, it looks like shadows and the sand script that starts off the story. We're, we're going on this intimate, but also epic journey. And I think this movie is about the juxtaposition of like the macro in the micro, mm-hmm. which I think is important. You have this plane flying over the desert And we're constantly being shown the comparison of the epic desert landscapes, the contours, but it's also being juxtaposed to like the bed sheets that, Mm -hmm. and like the, especially the human body that are always in contrast. And, and I like that because you see this, like what what could be like a desert space of Mm -hmm. like, of like miles and miles, but also you got bed sheets of of which is just a few feet, or like the contours of of a human body, you know, which is just a little space, you know. And I love that that we're constantly going back and forth between those two things, and and yeah. that is so unique. I've never seen that really in a movie. And at one time, I thought I was looking at the desert, but I'm looking at I think part of Kristen Scott Thomas's like some at, at one point. Like that. I'm like, how do yeah. they do that? Yeah. <laughs> I, can I answer? Can I answer? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Sam. No, no, no. I was going to say to to that point and something you and I, Sam, had talked about was like the projection of the character's emotions onto the desert. It's like blank, overwhelming landscape. And I think when the movie starts, we have this like landscape rife with possibility, right? There's hope, there's romance or being literally swept away. And over time, it slowly morphs into the antagonist of the film and is something that can Mm. really harm our characters. And it's, it's solely dependent on the perspective that these interlopers are bringing into their landscape. But in the present day, those micro moments, like those bed sheets, are Ralph Fiennes' desert, right? That's yeah. where wow. his body is mangled and stuck. And so that becomes his projection onto it. That's his whole world and his discomfort. Mm. And I, I just think I love these movies where the landscape becomes a character. You know, I think that's so powerful. Yes. And and what with, with the macro and the micro, what you're saying, Nathan, I really responded to that too. This is just, mm. I have a romantic spirit at heart. I, I, I am a, a hopeless romantic and I, mm. I, it is the, hey, core join my club. My soul. And, <laughs> and uh, okay. shameless, shameless plug, shameless plug here, but the whole, the whole crux, not the crux, the whole point of my walks of world YouTube show, it's, it's, mm. it's the romance of landscape and how it makes me feel. Yeah. So, this movie with the macro and the micro and the romance, it's one of those epic, epic sweeping adventures that makes you think about the, the grandeur of life. And to end, before I give the rating, I'll say one thing, going back to Colin Firth, who does a, an amazing, everyone's really Yeah, good really movie. understated. Understated. He does it so well. I think, and I'm just changing up a little bit, I don't know if he was intentionally trying to kill the three of them. I think he was so consumed with anger and rage that he wasn't thinking about the outcome. So if the plane hit Rafe Fines and the two of them lived, he'd deal with it later. But I think he just he he was so consumed that he just and wanted to just ram it into him and just and 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 maybe subconsciously though he did want everyone to die. So I come yeah, sort of flipping on it. Because at domestic at domestic die. violence yeah. uh, when there's they're never consumed with their anger. They're they're angry, yeah, but they know exactly what they're doing. It's a choice. I don't think they're self reflective enough. I don't know if Colin Firth is self reflective enough. I, I will say with with that and just ending my review, you know, talk about the the darkness and the demise of all these characters. It ends on a p- very you know positive note for Juliet Binoche's mm-hmm. character. And what I find actually one of the most emotional scenes, and I don't know why it hits so hard. It's after Ray Fiennes is already dead at the end and she's leaving in the truck and she looks back at the Italian monastery and the tower. And it's like, his story is left behind in the past. He's gone. The story of him and Catherine are over, but she is alive. She will take these memories and Mm -hmm. her future is bright. And the curse of all her loved ones dying may be lifted at this point. So it ends on this, this this optimistic, hopeful, yeah. you know, a character made it through this 
this tragic epic story. Mm. I'll end by saying I, I would give it I'd give it five stars as well. I it just it it boy tell, does the movie hit me, yeah. Tell me why. I don't know you guys, but tell me why when you're having a secret affair, the sex is steamier and more passionate than <laughs> if you're actually doing it with your husband or wife. It's, it's because it's for, forbidden. Secret? I, I have to because admit to forbidden. an affair to answer that. Yeah. Right. Wait, wait, what? Yeah. Right. Same. <laughs> It's, it's because it's forbidden, you know. It's, it's got like, it's got to be, and that makes it yeah. more passionate and steamier. And because you know, who wants to have sex with our same husband every day, every night, or every morning? Unless right? you really like, had to it wait. It's really it boring. Too. Eventually, it's what, like, oh, what, I have to face it, do it again. Come on. What people should take away from this podcast is marriage sucks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, 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 no. No, it's good. You can get it it wherever you can get it with whomever you can get it with, I I guess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Listen, they were in the desert. They were thirsty. Uh, (laughs) The desert Mm -hmm. and its lady mountains. Mm -hmm. You guys are talking me into a four and a half. I don't know how to say this. Boy, I, I really shouldn't mention this, but because I've praised this movie so much, there is one shot I find unintentionally amusing, and it's so terrible, Which but I'll one? say it. I Which mean, one? It's, is it? Okay, she's right. reading to Ray Fiennes as he's literally dying. She's given him Wait, all the Julie, morphine. Oh, Julia Pinoche. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it cuts to a shot where, like, he's, like, clearly he has died, and he's yes. just like, <laughs> and you and you, I'm like, I'm like, it's, gee, you think? I guess he didn't make it, and it's, it's. <laughs> It, it never hit me that way before, but for some reason I watched it the other night and I just found it unintentionally. <laughs> but you know what? I, really, oh, I read something about that. I agree, yeah. Sam. It, I, I kind of guffawed at that moment. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know what the reason is? If he could have died with his eyes closed or yeah. something. And what, ha- what I think I read is that that actually is a freeze frame. Because oh, no way. that yeah. they added, gr- that they kept repeating, they added grain to somehow. They, I get really getting technical here, and it's a very odd thing that they had to do to to achieve that. And I don't know why, because he couldn't stay still. Apparently, Ray Fine can't can't play dead very well. So like if he you was watch- in a shitload of makeup. I don't know if I can yeah I agree Sam a hundred percent. I I looked He's at that. I actually watched it again. I'm like that looks really. Goofy or something like <laughs> put it put it this way, yeah. it's not a subtle shot. No, it's no. Like, it looks dead. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <is> it a <laughs> joke. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, not, it's not, I it's it's Listen, kinda, the saddest part of this whole story the for me. The, sa- the, moment. the saddest part for me of the whole story is when he rips that white dress man. Yeah. I had the same thought. Approach. I was like, how is she gonna walk home? <laughs> You know but I it, love that dress. It was so beautiful, and you just ripped it. Come on. Well, there there are, are, hey, in, you know she, she. That's what you get for whacking Ray Fines. You know, she shows up and it's just like <laughs> slams him in the face, right? Wow. You know, regarding that, that's what you get for being so damn hot. You know, I guess is what she's trying to say. <laughs> We've watched a lot of those like film noir movies where like the, the sex I know. scenes in those where they really like they don't do it for me and they make me uncomfortable. The sex scenes in this movie. They, I, the passion works. Like they're not, yeah. they're not too long. I, I feel that the moment, like I like the sex scenes and for some reason yeah. in, in other ones, it's just like, ah, I, it have you guys, like, yeah. it's cheesy have Cheetos. You, is the, it's, it's, have you, yeah. have you read the think piece about modern movies? Cause we've seen such a decline in sex scenes and there's a think piece out that's like, everyone is beautiful and no one's having sex. About. Yeah, because now, it, now, now you could offend the whole world if you do it, because that's it's, what happens now. Because everybody gets offended. Everything is sort of everything is offensive. sanded down. Um, hey, I want to say I want to talk about something that my, my um, uh, move in this movie. Um, I want I want to see what you guys thought about this. I love the scene where Kip takes K off to some church. And I don't know where yeah. the other monastery, and it's this the most magical thing I think I've seen in a movie in a long time. It's so where whimsical. she almost is, like, and it hoists her up in this thing, and she's almost like this floating fairy with like a torch, and she's yeah. looking at all these tableaus. I mean, I imagine back in 1996, every 
every woman is looking over at their boyfriend or husband like, <laughs> how come you never take me to some abandoned monastery and hoist me up and look at tableaus at some ruins, you know? Like, I mean, like, like I never knew, you know? I, I, I don't know, but like, I just, I remember seeing that. I was like, this is like incredible. Do you and know I, what that really reminded me of? What? Wings of Desire. The Wim Wenders movie, yeah, well, where she's again, a trapeze my, shamefully, artist. I have not seen it. Not oh, seen that it's either. great! But she she's a trapeze artist, okay. and an angel, you know, sort of falls in love with that's, her. That's that's why I, I'm not in relationships. I don't think I can be good enough for any. None of us are. None of us. I don't think. I don't think it's a real standard to take yeah, your woman I, to I, a monastery. Okay, I can barely I, be good I enough for I beg to differ, though. Okay, to be my listen, you were okay. hoisted around the ruins of a monastery last week, Ellie. We know. No, listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have my show of significant others that uh, surprised me <laughs> greatly with things that I was not expecting. My Habibi, for example, he's he. He called me his queen. He's from Egypt. He was an eye surgeon. Mm-hmm. He's an he he is an eye surgeon. And I dated him for three months. And yeah, he gave me the world. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm you're my queen and money is no object. And I'll take you wherever you want. And he even bought me tickets to go to Egypt, but I was not gonna go to Egypt because he wanted me to go to Egypt to get married. And that was not mm-hmm. gonna happen. But it was one of those love affairs that I had. And it wasn't a love affair. I was already you know, separated, but it was like, it was like one of those affairs where, or a relationship, I should call it an affair. It was a relationship because it was three months. He was so kind to Carlos, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, wherever we went to eat dinner, he always purchased dinner for him too. And I take it to, and he always called me Habibi. And I actually ended up writing a short novel and sent it to him it with his all about stories. Yeah, and I sent it to him. It, the story, the short novel, is about our love story and how we met. And had I been late for another second, I would have never met him. But I wasn't. And Ellie, mm-hmm. and, and and since I know it's you know not a good thing to be you know re- relationship with coworkers, but since you're leaving, I just wanted to tell you I've been in love with you this entire. <laughs> What are we doing about it? <laughs> we'll go fly where, where, wherever you want. Um, and yeah, I, I love, I and love I think that scene. There's, got, there, there's something in someone, I, you know, and I, I think one of the reasons I love Juliet's story in the movie mm-hmm. is because she's like the childlike character, and I identify. Mm-hmm. I, I actually identify with both women, uh, with Krista because she's a married woman that's probably in a very unhappy marriage and doesn't know how to get out. And Juliet, because she's the child woman who has magic in her, no matter what's going on, she's still like, she's going to, she's a survivor. She's going to do whatever it takes and she's going to go to the very mm-hmm. end to. Exactly. And see, that's the good thing. I don't yeah. think Colin Firth is necessarily a bad guy. I just think he's a dull guy for yeah. her. He's just, he's just a, Dude, just a dude. It's just doing it. Yeah. Stuff. And he's like, when he, when he convinced, he's like, she's been crying on my shoulder all these years. And I convinced her to take my shoulder. <laughs> Stroke of brilliance, really. It's just like, he's he's just, he's he's a regular <laughs> Joe, you know? And yeah. that's the point of his character. Mm-hmm. And it's like painful, but it's true. A regular <laughs> Joe that's always involved with his work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one other thing I want to talk about that kept coming up, particularly by the last little character, was like, it doesn't matter where you come from. Right. And for a movie that shows a whole lot of white people in this movie, as opposed to people who live where they're shooting. Do we think this is maybe like an anti-war parable, an anti-colonial thing? Because this comes up a lot. Lajlo is constantly like, why does it matter where I come from? Who cares? He has this very academic perspective of like good ideas and good people can come from anywhere. I think so. I mean, yeah, it's like an undercurrent of the movie. You know what I mean? There's definitely it's it's the. It's a good anti-war movie in the sense that it shows the effect. I mean, even like Willem Dafoe literally has a line like there was a consequence to what you did. It did this. And he's it like, kind of feels like a parable, right? Like yeah. A, I can definitely. Yeah, I, I don't know. For me. Yeah, I, mean, I think the point is that even assholes deserve love. 
Yeah, that's a good. That's, that's a good that's, one too. That's, that's what. That's what I took away. That's what I've been telling Tom all these years. I just couldn't help but think about the fact that when it's like 1939 and they're in the desert, I'm like, you guys, you guys got to go back to Los Angeles. Wizard of Oz is playing in the theater right now. That movie's great. Yeah. Oh, it's a good movie too. Well, you know what he's talking. Do Do you think that she really hit her head when she was leaving the movie theater? I love that because I, think, I feel I like she I feel did. Like that's I real think life. She, she did it by yeah. Do you think it really happened? But like she really did by accident in actual scene, and they I just would, left it. I would I guess think, that it was scripted, but I'm just guessing, and I don't know. I do not know. That was just my um, ter- feeling. I just kept thinking both characters were so much stronger than I would ever be. It looked authentic, <laughs> like it, I mean, it looked it like it wasn't like the actress like messed up and walked into a pole. That's what, like, that's it, what it, I it, thought. It, it felt pretty much like it was part of it was supposed to be part that's of it great. because it seemed like it would make sense. You know, you, you're, you're trying to make this dramatic exit and you run into a pole. That's what life is like. Yeah. It's true because I've run into my share of poles trying to get out of the situation. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. I was, I was kind of comical. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of that's what life is like, a great example of that really brief. There's a great moment in the movie state in Maine directed by David Mamet, where Philip Seymour Hoffman is sitting in a restaurant by a window and he's like, my screenplay is about purity. And right as he it's says that, really the card goes over a home. pothole behind him. It's like, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> so it's one of those like moments. I'll, I'll tell you really briefly too. I love the line where they're really hitting it off. And she, Catherine invites him to come back inside into the hotel. He's like, no, I must go home. She's like, no, come on, come. And he's like, he, he puts the line down. He's like, Mrs. Clifton. And she just goes, don't. As in, like, come on, you're attracted to me. I'm attracted to you. Don't play this game. Like, don't insult yeah. me like that. I That's why she's 100% selling the romance for me. Her performance in this movie is like, it's just her back must have hurt. She carried the whole thing. So good. <laughs> her back must hurt. <laughs> Two quick things. I I, I want to wrap this up and get to a, a couple of things uh, with Ellie before we 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 end the show. But I I want to just bring up the the bomb defuse scene, oh, with, which whoa. was one of the most intense whoa. things I think. Holy mackerel! Seen, because I think we can all agree. I mean, I mean, I I know we've all seen this a couple times, but even though i've i've seen this i've seen this movie 3 times i forgot i always forget that kip survives this but it is so yeah. set up this guy is a dead man and every mm-hmm. and everything points to him not surviving this this scene and what it is it is a textbook example of how to set up and pay off like a, a scene with with this with a suspense scene because yeah. it, it is incredible with the um, the Americans showing up in the the tanks and he the the tools getting dropped into the water he is trapped in that hole and Juliet Binoche riding her bike and she sees the the army going by it is you just know what's going to happen you know he's going to die so it is i it's an, it's an incredible sequence it is yeah, yeah. because you know he's going to die, but the fact that he makes it, I like that with this movie is there's all this darkness, but it it ends with a thread of hope for yeah. her future with Kip, even if she's not going to see him right away. But it's like I I like it when movies they pile on dark themes, but they give just a sliver of optimism at the end because humans. Yeah. It's kind of like the 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 theme of like ending the news with like, you talk about all this, the tragedy of the world yeah. and the last story is, but such and such, you know, found new happiness because of his yeah. you know love for dogs. Like the, if it bleeds, it leads. But right. Humans yeah. need a little bit of hope. And I just like that the movie gives a mm. little bit of hope because if it just ended with like the plane crashing and they're dead and then like the camera pulls back and you just see plane wreckage and it's like life sucks. The end. Like, oh fuck! Come on, man. I also love movies that I I really love movies that begin with the ending. Mm-hmm. I yeah. really do. Yeah. I really me do. too. Because it makes me, me want to keep watching. Like, what happened? Well, that's what's Same. really unique about this. This movie is not just a romance; it's also a mystery that yeah. you're unfolding, yeah. you know, figuring out as we go. So it's it's one of the and things you, I, I do. You like watch it the second time. I totally forgotten how it went. 
you know, so it's a, mm-hmm. a sense of surprise. And mm-hmm. it's really nice to watch a film that you really loved back then and watch it again because you see parts now that make more sense to you and you have a different mindset about it. Totally. So. Well, exactly. I would and love I to watch it again. A, a really quick comment. If there are any like aspiring filmmakers out there that happen to be listening to this podcast, go with your heart and, and tell the story that you want to, because I guarantee you, yeah. Here's, this movie was a huge hit, but I guarantee that if you took this concept in an alternate universe and this hadn't made this movie hadn't existed and you tried to pitch this to some marketing executive, they would say, it's confusing. Can't it just be linear? Do they have to die? Can't you give it a happy mm-hmm. ending? All this like and just be true to yourself, because if you feel the passion, that can be marketable in and of itself. And I know that's a random comment, but I've been dealing with that no and not like, random at all it's not these, random these, yeah this, the, the passion if you have the passion for a story you want to tell there's a chance that someone else there want out there wants to watch it too so never give up and you know sam i'm yet oh, to yeah. find the story that i want to tell as an actress i'm i've done films right but i'm yet to find that writer or basic writer director that wants to shoot a film that that i feel you know it's the movie that, yes, I want to tell this story so badly. And I find myself that, you know, here in New England, a lot of, most of the films that I I, I do see are horror or mm-hmm. I'm yet to find something that's truly heartfelt for me in, in, mm-hmm. in, the, in this area. So we'll see. I'm still like... Maybe it has to be where I have to write it myself and then start. Break out it. your journal, Ellie. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> write, another, write the best notebook story yet. Oh, you, you, uh, you, you would you write a great it. romance. You yeah. will find it. Just because just because you don't know at the moment there, like you, the search is like you, you, you can't force it. Like if it's not there yet, it will be. It has to be organic, but it will mm. come to you. Yeah. Writing it is easy. I wouldn't know what to do about being a director or cinematographer or anything like that but you know but it, there's it's a great just... director named sam cole and let me tell you oh my god that's <laughs> right i totally forgot about that hello this guy what? oh this guy you know phew, like whoa <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go film it at the uh, california desert or something oh yeah actually you know? actually could do that yeah yeah. <laughs> head out to palmdale you know <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of deserts, I remember I was working on Fear Factor many, many years ago. We were out in Palmdale, and the first episode I ever did was they were on a a biplane walk, and it just reminded me of the English patients. So we had planes Mm. flying all over the place in the desert, and it was and it was so windy, and I had to wear goggles (sighs) to to keep the sand out of my eyes. So it was like. (laughs) I was living. I was living this movie. <laughs> to, to keep the sun out of my ass. I don't know. <laughs> Manhattan Beach was the original cave of swimmers. <laughs> you know, speaking of, you know, I, I wanted to mention one other thing here. I thought was interesting. So Laszlo Amalshi was a real person. That this is based. This is a fictional story, but he really is a person that discovered the cave of swimmers in 1933. So that is a true part of this. Mm-hmm. Of course, you didn't, you didn't know well, that. You didn't know. I'm, I'm telling our listeners that. Oh, wow. Where <laughs> have you been? <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't even know that. <laughs> we, never, we never, we never mentioned that in the. That's a good fact. That's a good yeah. fact. Yeah. yeah, they've got that like that text blurb. I think at the end of the somewhere in the credits, later on in the credits, it says parts of this are true, parts of this are false. What Some of the characters that? are. Ah. It's way, way at the end. I just yeah. watched the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I didn't you're stick right. around for the credits. You're right. I remember that After now. the credits? This is like post credits? Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the credits. It just basically explains that the movie draws oh. from real life things and, and oh. but that some so, of the characters are from goes, the World War II. But I guess to say, you guys don't watch the whole thing all the way to the end. And do not watch I usually, the credits. I usually, I usually do, but I don't read everything. I kind of listen to the music, the score, because I like <laughs> listening to that, but I don't read everything. <laughs> Nathan, I don't, I don't want to pick a side or like drive a wedge between us, but <laughs> Ellie and I watched it. Boo, be and <laughs> oh, Because <laughs> you know what? Great minds think alike. That's, that's true. But but all of you are great. 
Yes, and, you are. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 and Bob's your uncle. So cheers. Yeah. <laughs> what? Bob is your Ooh. uncle? It's a, ra- it's a random British It's a random it's phrase. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's but it's, it's nothing? I, I kind just, of. I, heard it, I just hear it in movies and they're like, and Bob's your uncle. And it's just like, wow. and basically it just means like, hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's like when there's nothing else to say, they say Bob's your uncle. Yeah. I've never heard that before. I, I'll be honest, Ellie, I'm with you. I, I never understood the reference. <laughs> okay. Imagine me in the video. I mean, I work meeting and all of a sudden I go, boss your uncle. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm probably looking, looking at me like, what the F is wrong with this girl? Just, just say it to a British person. He'd be like, oh, I'd like to buy you a pint because you said that. Yeah. I think it means like something uh, easy. Let's, let's, like let's transition work. in a moment to our, our wrap up and our decisions on this. But before we do that, I just want to thank everyone for tuning into our show. Your feedback would be greatly appreciated. So if you agree or disagree with our opinions, reach out to us. Our email is back to the frame rate at gmail.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram, threads, and TikTok, and you can Find us at Back to the Frame Rate. We're also on X or Twitter, Back Frame Rate. Sign up for our newsletter, Frame Rate Month. You can do that by emailing us at back to the frame rate at gmail.com. And what we'd really love you to do is just spread the word and share our, our podcast episodes uh, with your friends, your family, and leave us a rating and review. We need reviews. Five star reviews would be <laughs> the best, of course. So. Send us your reviews. Yes, please. please. A sweeter. A I had to review in Africa. I <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what I want to do is just, we're just going to do our, our decision on whether this movie gets saved into our vault or expunged, purged, banished. Hmm. To the fiery asteroid apocalypse. By the way, Ellie, even though you're no longer on our podcast, we will still let you join us when the time comes. You know, you will always have you'll have a spot. So make sure you come running. We'll open the the vault. We'll, we'll open the the door for you. You can still join us. Absolutely. Right? So I'm we still need more estrogen in this I'm, I'm still bunker. coming into the apocalypse. I'm part of this crew. Yes, you are. Yes. Okay. yes. 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 I leave me behind. We're not leaving no, you behind. Not leave you behind. And mm-hmm. as a parting gift because in the world of this podcast since it's supposed to take place in nuclear fallout we have all pitched together to build you a special oxygen suit so that when you do leave the podcast yes. you will be safe while everyone else burns yes. to a crisp and you can come yes. back and be with us. I love that. And yeah. you have your special room that the notebook is on loop. Oh, Woo! it has to be. Oh, I'll be just happy with the notebook for the rest of my it's time. On loop. It's Every two movie. hours it just starts all over oh, again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. It's kind of like that movie, The End of the World, with the, the girl with the friends episode. She just wants to watch Friends. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's like, movie. Speaking of Friends, have you seen the Seinfeld episode where Elaine hates the English patient? And I like, mentioned that to Nathan. I, I, it's it was so funny. <laughs> I totally forgot about it. Where yeah. she's like, the sex scenes are unforgivable. <laughs> I think I really, I don't remember the episode clear, but I literally think there's a scene where she's watching the movie in the theater and she's like bored out of her mind. She's like, Why yes, there like is. It? I don't get it. Yeah, there is. It's so funny. I meant to talk about that. I thought about Elaine for at least half of this movie, oh and I really liked it, but I couldn't stop thinking about Elaine. I'm just being like, mm. so true. Oh, man. I'm gonna jump into our our decision on this. So I guess I have to go first. Mm-hmm. Now, as you heard before, I gave this a three. I must still stand by this, even though. I, I, I will gush over the, the technical achievement that this movie is, and I have a, so many positive things. We didn't really get into some of the, the story problems that I had as much as I may have wanted to, but I'm we've talked enough about this. But I, I'll just say, really, my hang-up is really the ending. I don't really feel like this movie lands the way mm. I want it to. I have a, some real issues with it. I wish this movie ended with some more... It had maybe more of an ambiguous ending where it we kind of wonder if he was actually a Nazi spy, perhaps, or if uh, I, I wanted something more from that. 
I, I and, will say really ble- briefly regarding yep. that, and this is just my interpretation. Yep. I totally understand the desire to have the ambiguity. I think that the way that with the film's flashbacks, I don't think it was trying to go for the unreliable narrator. I just think when it showed the flashbacks, it just showed what was happening. And I think the device I agree. the time jumping, but I don't, I don't think it, 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 it was making an effort to be in that a- ambiguous. I, I get realm. it. But I wanted something that was more surprising, something that subverted my expectations a little bit more, you know, I, I think that's all it is. Everything kind of unfolds due to happenstance, you know, Jeffrey's plane crash, the misunderstanding after crossing the desert. It just felt very like, oh, I, I wanted to like punch the screen the way it happened. <laughs> and it made me, it made me angry the way it all unfolded. And it, and it tainted my experience to a degree because of that. I know I'm, my rating is kind of harsh. I mean, I didn't, I didn't not like this movie, but I didn't, I wasn't really like this movie. Is, it's really, you really have to hang your hat on that romance between Ray Fiennes and Kristen Scott Thomas. And I did not like the El Malachi, El Malachi mm-hmm. character, I guess. I, I And if you don't love the characters, if you don't love really spending time with them, it's it hurts your experience a little bit. And I I don't know I, I don't know what I, this says about like me, but Al Mashi, man, I love that dude. I'd be his friend. <laughs> if I was in the desert with those people, I he would not find me annoying. If 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 I was in a car ride with Al Mashi for like eight hours. He would respect the fact that I didn't talk that much, and I think I think we'd like I think we would find a, a friendship. But that's that's, that's just, so I'm not funny. To, I'm not trying to downplay yeah. your opinion. I just I see Fine. him and I relate to his when he says like I once someone was driving me to once go see a fire. He didn't talk for nine hours, and then he said <laughs> fire. That was a good day. I was like, yeah, you're the man. Yeah. <laughs> that's just me. It's just me. Yeah. But, I, but I'll say it again. I I really got into the romance between and Kippen and Hannah. I could watch a whole movie about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so uh, much chemistry. And, and my final thought is, man, after watching this whole series of movies, I need to up my wardrobe, get some nice white linen. Ooh, get mean, some jod purse. I, I, you know, yeah. I, 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 I got to, I got to go somewhere. I don't know. Banana Republic. Where, where do you get this stuff? I, I don't know. But I, I'm in the same boat because I like wear the same stupid ass plaid shirt, like all, like all the time. And I just, I look like, I look like a young, like Paul Giamatti from Sideways. Like, ah, I'm just trying to write my, my script. And I just, ah, you know, and I'm like, I, I, I want to be, I want to be cool. Sam Paul. Like, oh no, here comes this like frumpy, like pig, you know? So I'm going to, I'm going to improve. You yeah. don't look like yeah. that. So ultimately, I think I'm in the minority, but I, I'm, I'm not voting for this to go in the vault, mm. but yeah, okay. but that's just me. All yeah. right. We're going to go with to be sure. Yeah, yeah. I also had a hard time with the ending of this movie. Actually, I, I don't know what it was. It's not that we haven't spent enough time with Binoche and finds at this point to really like feel the impact of Laszlo's decision here, but something about it just didn't gut punch me. Like I said, something about the bifurcated storytelling. I don't know what it was. I wasn't as swept away as I wanted to be. It wasn't as gut punch as the end of atonement, but I don't think that, negated the rest of the movie for me i think if anything that's probably just a product of like the desert just how i felt when i was watching it this time around i can't wait to rewatch this movie for sure and i thought about this section because i knew it'd come up and i thought about how god i'm just gonna look like such an easy grader because this apparently is a genre that i did not know ticked all of my boxes (laughs) (laughs) but i am so into this and then i just thought like you know, what What am I saying no to? I'm stuck in a nuclear fallout bunkers with you people. <laughs> All the epic romance movies that I can get, please. Why am I saying no? It's just more good movies. It doesn't have to meet a certain part. Like, this was a good movie. I enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed <clears throat> Atonement, although for different reasons. I, I say save it. At some point, I'm going to be like, we need a movie with Ralph Fine just being absolutely fine and then absolutely burnt to a crisp in this crazy makeup. So I'm I'm happy to keep it. I'm happy to watch it again. And 
Maybe yeah. I'll come around to the ending after the world ends. Who knows? <laughs> Color my perspective of it. Don't worry, my easy grading will go by the wayside once we get to Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We are on to Ellie. So for me, this movie, I'm a hopeless romantic. And I love anything romance. And if Apparently, it's done, so do I. If it's done well, <laughs> it's, if it's well done, I'm going to want to watch again. And this is, I want to say, might be maybe the third time I've seen this film. And every time I watch the film, I always enjoy it. I don't feel bored with it. I don't feel, I still get the suspense. I still love the characters. Every character gives me something. Everyone, oh, yeah. every single character in their own way. I, I, you know, unlike, unlike Nathan, who doesn't feel like they bring no him in. No love in my heart. No love in my heart. <laughs> no, there's no love in your heart. Unlike <laughs> Nathan, the characters do pull me in and I feel for each one of them. And obviously my favorite character is Juliet because she's such a child And woman. so punk rock when she cuts her own hair. Uh, you know, I'm like, heck yeah, girl. That's something I would do because I'm crazy like that. But, so cool. but this woman lives in this world that shit is going on around her and she still has really great spirits. And I want to mm-hmm. hang out with someone like her that, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to give me great spirits. And she has this hope about her and that, mm-hmm. you know, like even though she lost her love, she lost her friend, there's hope. And then she falls in love with Skip, Skip, Kip. What's his name? Kip. Kip. Yeah. Kip. And just the way she comes to him to show him that she's interested in him. I thought she's such a child. That's something mm-hmm. I would do. Cause if I like somebody, I'm not going to say I like you. I'm just going to do stupid shit. Like, you know, like, <laughs> Oh my God. Like, I don't know, maybe bump myself into a freaking pole too. But uh, cause, yeah, I've done it before. I, so, so I loved it. I, and I will watch it again. So yeah, it's going in the vault. Woo. Awesome. Team ball. Yeah. All right, Sam, it's up to you. <laughs> All the you suspense. Know, <laughs> as as much as I enjoyed this film, I don't know. Of, of course I'd put it in the vault. <laughs> oh my God. You I kind of have me going. I was going to throw this oh, over the screen. <laughs> I mean, like, Woo! of course I'd put it in the vault. I gave it five stars. Like, uh, like if, if I didn't Woo! put it in the vault, then my name is not Sam Cole. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be untrue to myself. Just like Conan O'Brien, I am a repressed <laughs> British woman in a man's body. So, <laughs> oh. so yeah, in the, in the vault it goes. I can't wait until we heat our popcorn up with radioactive waves and we crack open the English patient. We watch this again and again and again. Make them be sitting there like... Oh, I can't wait. Uh, it's, and it's I think fine. Conan O'Brien is is actually Irish, so my apologies, Conan. But since you made that, it's just it's I, it's a joke. I'm being <laughs> whatever. A funny, funny man, Sam. They lump us all in with the South. It's the <laughs> <Yeah>. same. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's so, a wrap on the English piece. That is that is, and that's a wrap on our sound effect. The, the, oh, that's, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, I love the <laughs> finality of that video. No, you, know, you know that little <laughs> that little voice at the end. That's Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Going like oh, another feeling. <laughs> it's fine. Oh it's open door policy with all movies. <laughs> open door, open door policy. policy. It's fine. It's fine. That's our show, but you know, I want to just have a moment here to just talk to Ellie for a moment because this is this is this is the end of you as a full time mm-hmm. host on, on Back to the Frame, right? And you've been here since day one. We've I done have. we've we've done this is our fifty eighth episode. That is that's Isn't something. Crazy? You know, you've, you've, I know, and we've been doing this for almost a year what, 14 or months or so yeah. Yeah, so over over yeah. a year so i don't know i mean i just wanted to uh, just to give you an opportunity if there's anything you want any parting wisdom or anything you want to say to our our audience all all two of them 
You have Ron. <laughs> Ron. 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 No, Ron. I'm just kidding. Ron. Ron. <laughs> it, was great, it was great working with Sam Cole. He's so awesome. He's so nice. Guy. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's crazy how you can throw your voice like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have many talents. One of them is wow. change my voice. <laughs> so thank you, Nathan, for giving me the floor. So, yeah. So I actually been struggling with this decision because I love the podcast and I love films and I love dissecting mm-hmm. every film and you know sometimes putting the film down and crashing it down to the ground because I don't like him like no or November <laughs> never forget no or November or always for that matter uh, um, Richard Dreyfus and I just want to say I <laughs> forgive you because I don't- you're- you're a talented just... actress, and I, you know, and always, let's face it, 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 it had its problems. Anyway, sorry ah! to interrupt. Keep going. <laughs> Although I have to say, I do love The Fisher King, and I know that's your movie that you picked, right? Yes. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually like that movie, so not bad at all. But yeah, so I've been struggling with this decision, and for a few weeks now, I... I kept telling my son, yeah, I'm going to tell them this Monday. This Monday is going to be my last Monday. And every time I end the podcast, Carlos will be like, did you tell them? No. What are you going to tell them? I'm like, I can't. I don't know. I, I just don't know. And and I finally brought myself to, to yeah, I, I had a little push from the universe. <laughs> it so happened. The universe comes knocking at my door and always guides me mm-hmm. to make the the fine decisions in my life and I and I trust that completely I'm a big believer in that you have to listen to excuse me talk about wisdom words you have to listen to your instinct never never deny your instincts uh, if you feel a certain way go with it and I think we as humans have a tendency to always um, put a guilt a pressure on ourselves for every decision that we make and we mm-hmm. forget that more importantly than that 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 guilt or feeling like you're making the wrong decision is yes listening to those instincts follow those instincts because that's what's going to lead you to where you need to go and um about mm-hmm. six years ago that's exactly what i did and that's when i started my acting career um after my car crash and left me with no freaking car and a concussion I mm-hmm. I basically listened to the universe and my instincts and and had I not done that I wouldn't be where I am today and I've been very lucky um, blessed I guess when I say with all the film opportunities that I've gotten in the past six years not just here in New England but in California and in New York as well and very grateful that I was able to get an agent right away. Because I know that there are other actors mm. that for years have been trying to get an agent and they have not been able to. So I think for some reason I'm in the right place. And every day I am always working really hard as a, an actor training in classes every day, submitting, auditioning, because I have, you know, what's the end goal for any actor if it's fame and fortune? Might as well just give up. But if mm-hmm. it's to tell meaningful stories and leave a legacy of mm-hmm. the stories that you told to the world and that might make a change for someone listening or watching you, then yeah, that's that's the only reason and that's my end goal for me working so hard. And because I'm so in tune with my acting. And other things that I want to do, I had to make this decision to, to kind of take something out of my plate, right? <laughs> and unfortunately, I this is the one thing that I'm going to have to take out of the plate as a full time, like Nathan says, right? Because I still want to be, if you need me as a guest host to come in and do something with you guys. So this is not hey, the end. Yes. This yeah. is not the end. This is just me just focusing on things that align with what I want to do. Yep. And I think yeah. it's okay. And I think people need to remember if they're listening to this podcast that it is okay to, if you're doing something for a while and you've reached that moment where something is not aligning with your purpose, that it's okay to say, 
I can leave it here. I've done really well. I've done everything that I could, but I want to do this now. And that that is okay. Give yourself permission to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. and, but my takeaway from this whole year and some months of being in this podcast, you guys, other than being really funny, it's, you guys are tremendously fun to hang out with. You've put up with my silliness, my chitty cheeses, my cheeto, cheesy cheetos, you know, speeches. And I even cried in this podcast. <laughs> like I, I heard the notebook podcast. I'm like, oh my God, I totally cried. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And, you know, it, it, from the get go, it was just Nathan and I and Sam and I, but then B came in and you you fit so well with our group. And I thought it was like, it felt good to have another female. <laughs> I'm going to miss you, girl. In the group because I'm like, you know, yeah. like there's two guys, yeah. but are they ever going to understand Tim, another female? It's going to be the, the Mojo Dojo Casa <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and so uh, my takeaway from the whole, the group and this, this project is that aside the, the films that we discuss is the the friendship that I built with you guys. And I think that's my biggest takeaway from here because sometimes the project is not, it might, it might be everything for Nathan, but, you know, like for me, the project was great, but more importantly was the, the friendships, the mm -hmm. trust that was built in this circle with this, with you guys. Mm -hmm. And if, Anyone that comes to do this guest or this this project with you guys is going to, it's full of surprises and fun times. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not going to be disappointed. I am. It's bittersweet, right? Because I love this, but I, yeah. I have to do, I have to do what I have to do for continue, you know, to, I need to grow up more in my uh, career in acting and that's what I'm focusing on right now. So yeah, and I will. I will always be your friend, Ellie, as long oh. as you give me chicken McNuggets once in a while. Dude, we can go and eat chicken McNuggets together because it's one of my favorite things to eat other than Absolutely. cake. Yeah, mm -hmm. but cake but is I'll, first. <laughs> I'll, I'll be your friend anyway, even if there's no chicken McNuggets. I'm like, grudgingly, but I'll still be your I'm friend. Like, I'm like waiting for my going away cake party here. <laughs> like, where's my freaking cake? Is that what people yeah. do? I'm sorry, we didn't really have time to like wrangle like the the party. We're gonna have to do that. Mm, we are gonna need another, another, Nathan, another day. Nathan, I have to tell you something. Remember I how failed, I failed in this department? Completely. I totally like, did. I have hired a, a an avatar Roger Moore stripper and pole dancer for you. Oh my you're god, you're so gonna you torture like, her. <laughs> this all, this all, like, kind of all happened within the last forty eight hours. Everyone has to understand. So it really wasn't, <laughs> no, you know, it's true. I, I, I thought it. about putting together a clip show. I thought about so many things that we could do here, but I was like, I don't have time to. It was so very. It together. happened really, really quickly, and I think that if I had not done this when I did, Nathan, when we talked yeah. on Saturday, I'd still be two months from now, Carlos will still be asking. Did you tell him? Did you tell him? I'm like, nope, no, I didn't. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it wasn't like an easy decision for me. Don't yeah. think it was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. it, it, I've been struggling with with the parting part. But mm -hmm. now that it's here, I'm glad that I gave myself permission to finally do it. And as much as I love you guys, because I do, and I love the podcast, I and I don't think it's being selfish, but it's more like I need to grow more in my acting. Mm -hmm. I yeah, see where mm -hmm. it goes. And then I'm here, if you need me, to come back to do a guest appearance. I'm here whenever you need me. So I'm not, you're not getting rid of me completely. So, <laughs> but I do want to say, Nathan, yeah. twice we went to eat at that restaurant. What's the name of that restaurant? Yeah. Oh, Citizen Crust. Yeah, in Citizen Fox, Crust. Fox, That's the place where I actually tried the corn thing that you ordered the oh, first oh, time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I now make it myself at home. Ooh. It's so good. And so yeah. I like, I make corn and I'm like, this kind of tastes like the one in the crust, but maybe it's missing a, another <laughs> ingredient, but it's similar. It's got my own Latino salsa in there, but anyway, mm. yeah. So I've been making those. So I, you know, I wish you all the best. I'm always going to be listening to the podcast because I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a dire oh, okay. fan. I'm a dire fan of the podcast. Um, Side note: We cannot talk about her behind. Her no, because I will be listening. I'll be listening. And you know what? If you put a movie in that vault, 
that I don't approve of, I will comment on it. <laughs> I will tell you guys. Uh, I hope you, I hope you continue to to comment on us. That no, of great. course I will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, so I am very grateful, Nathan, that you. I thought of me and brought me into the podcast from the very get go. I've learned a lot about podcasting, what to do and what not to do, technically. But yeah, so we'll I, I have no regrets, Ellie. This has been a wonderful ride. I have had so, I've getting to know you over the last fourteen months because you know even before this. You know, we were friends on Facebook. You know, we you you put a. I think you worked a couple of days on on my movie. I totally uh, did years a- and years ago, and but you know, we really didn't know each other that well because no. you were one of like fifty people in the room. I was I was one of the fifty people in that in the club dancing. Yeah, exactly, but you know, it's been so great hearing your stories about your family and your mm. life and all the things going on in your life. You've been so open and transparent about things going on, mm. and it's been wonderful and you I, you'll, yeah. i've learned a lot from you oh, I so think- I, I appreciate everything that you have brought to the show oh, and ellie God. you really are a great actress and i hope to have the opportunity to work with you one day for real yeah. i cannot Danger. wait to yeah. work with you sam because i've seen some of your work so yes <laughs> i absolutely yeah. look forward to that and and nathan you gotta keep making film man i i I there is something cooking. I cannot talk about it yet. All right, um, we're, we're not there, there, there's a, there there is there is something that I am I am I am working on a super secret project <laughs> that might come together before the end of 2024. Where uh, so we'll we'll see. Yeah, don't talk about it because that's how you shinx it. So don't. Oh yeah, I, I, every the last time I I went all in on something and I talked a lot about it, uh, mm-hmm. it all fell apart. So this yeah. is a uh, zip it. Yeah, yep. we don't we don't yeah. want to know until it's done. <laughs> Ellie, we're gonna miss you. Oh, me too. Voice. Yeah. Be, it was such a pleasure to get to know you as well, and I, I'm absolutely like honestly, it takes my breath away that you can pilot a plane. <laughs> oh my god i don't be so afraid yeah. but that that's brave and well you can star in tv so we're both very brave. <laughs> the great thing you is know? we have 75 hours of ellie of ellie talking so <laughs> i can just take the ai version of her to review movies going forward excuse me <laughs> that would be against the authenticity of the the show, so we just have to bring her back <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. get you for that, Nathan. Yeah. He's, he's, always, only use, he's only gonna use one AI sentence. Every single response will be Nathan. Nathan, you, Nathan, Nathan, you can you can try <laughs> to replicate the you know the AI of me, <laughs> but you're never gonna get the cheesy Cheetos in there. Good for you. I know, I, I, That's I, cheesy Cheetos. I've already got it recorded. <laughs> That's another <laughs> letterbox <laughs> list right there. Cheesy Cheetos. Cheesy Cheetos. <laughs> okay well thank you thank you ellie so much it's it's, it's been so wonderful having you we you will be back yes we'll be back for for future guest spots so this is not the end no it's not okay well oh so the last thing i want to say because before we wrap up we are going to be going into a new retrospective for april this is pretty exciting because, you know, off of the the big win for Oppenheimer, we decided that we are going to go into a Christopher Nolan retrospective. Woo! And we each picked a movie that we are going to, that we wanted to review. Sam, you chose Insomnia. Mm-hmm. B, you picked Prestige. And mm-hmm. I picked Following. I've actually never seen The, fall, the Following. Following. Has anyone here seen Following? I have. I nope. I've seen Following. Well, you're and the it, only one. I am. And <laughs> I, 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 love, I freaking love Nolan. And I've yeah, seen yeah. that. It's in the Criterion channel. I think following that's why I saw it. Following we're and we're gonna start off with that one. Actually, it's on Mubi, it's on tu- Mubi and Tubi, and it's available on VOD. So and you're gonna like it. You're gonna yeah. like it. And I, um yeah. we're and since we were we had to pick a wild card, we're we're gonna keep it all in the early part of Nolan's career. So we're gonna also do memento. So we're doing the first well, I was about to say the first four movies, but we're not doing any of the Batman movies. So we're skipping over the first Batman movie in so outside of the Batman movies, we're doing the first four in his oeuvre, I guess you could say. <laughs> Following, Memento, Insomnia, and 
the prestige. So I, I'm really excited about this, which opens the door. Maybe at another time, way down the road, we might do the back end of his career. Cause there's another mm. four movies or so that we might review someday. Who knows? It's an interesting career. Yeah. So tune in next week where we'll be discussing, I think it's 1998 or 99. I forget the following his first, his first film. So. 1998. All right. All right. That is our show this week. Back to the Frame Rate is part of the Western Media Podcast Network. We also wish to thank, thank Brian Ellsworth for our show opening. On behalf of all of us, we bid you farewell from the Fall Shelter. Your presence in our underground sanctuary is truly appreciated. We are truly sorry you cannot join us, but we want to express our gratitude for your company. If you're finding solace in our discussions, we kindly ask you to please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Your support is the beacon of light that brightens our confined space. Head on over to Apple Podcasts or iTunes, Spotify, or whichever portal connects you to our broadcast and share your thoughts. Until we emerge from the fallout, stay with us, keep hope alive, and keep those reviews coming. This is the end of our transmission. Back to the frame rate. Pum pum pum. Signing off. <laughs> Macarena? <laughs> I want you to know it's over. Well. Well. Bye. 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 Damn it. Oh, that was sad. I said, oh. <laughs>